All right. Well, nope. Nope. I definitely need a stronger clap than that. All right. <laughs> Why can't I clap? All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And of course, of course, we got a great action packed vlog for you. Thank you so much for joining me again, everybody. Got a fancy little, fancy little new intro. Ah, it was so cool. You know what? I'm going through all these, I'm going through all these hundreds and hundreds of video submissions and some of them are funny and some of them are making me laugh and some of them have really bad light and some of them are really cool and I end up going bananas and down. There was one guy, there was one guy who sent me a reaction video of him being told that his wife is pregnant. That was the best video. That should be my intro, but it's not. It's not going to be my intro, but congratulations to you, sir. I thought that was just uh, super cool. Anyway, I went bananas and I started downloading all the videos, just all the videos that any sent me, and I was putting them in the new vlog, the new vlog intro folder. And then when it came time to edit the vlog, I just realized I had way too many clips. So some of the clips in there uh, might be rotating out with different ones over the course of time. I noticed there's like a clown in there for a little bit that I thought was super cool, but I know some people some people do have a clown phobia, so I don't want to I don't want to freak anybody out with a clown. But uh, yeah, got a new intro. Let me get out let me get out my vlog notes here, and you'll notice I'm wearing a hooded sweatshirt. That's right. Clutch. Psychic warfare is real. I don't know how long this is going to last. It was chilly down here in California. I was legitimately like chilly today. I was like, ooh, I, I need a hoodie. I'm going to put on a hoodie. And so I've been wearing a hoodie. I have a feeling I'm just going to get warmer and warmer as the vlog goes on. The hoodie's, the hoodie's done. The hoodie's not lasting past the beer segment. I guarantee it. But, 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 uh, let's get into the vlog. Let me get my vlog notes out here. So, uh, yes, uh, I, as you're watching this, I will be on an airplane, uh, with, uh, Omboy OC. We're headed to New Orleans, NOLA for VPX. We're going to be there all weekend. I come home on a Monday. I'm here for exactly one day. And then the very next day I fly out to Ireland and I'm there until like the 16th of the month. So videos, Mm, my video schedule is going to be affected by that, as is my ability to reply to comments, my ability to reply to emails. I'm going to bring, be bringing uh, my laptop with me to Ireland um, just because I can't let myself get that far behind. There's more important things that happen in emails that I kind of need to be on top of. So I'm going to be taking my laptop with me so I can at least try to answer some emails. But things like... Uh, comments if you mess if you you know if you mention me on instagram and you're like lol nick check out this funny video i'm not chances are i'm just i'm traveling for me is crazy traveling for me is work i mean i do enjoy it uh i am going to try to do a travel vlog for both events and sort of mash them into some sort of giant travel vlog. Uh, it'll just be a vlog of me for basically the next 16 days. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get to see what I see, drink what I drink, eat what I eat, and vape what I vape for the next 16 days, both here, VPX New Orleans, and then uh, and then in Ireland. So yeah, things will be slow. So if I'm not getting back to your comments, or if I'm not getting back to your emails, or especially Facebook, Facebook is the worst. If I'm not getting back to your Facebook messages, just remember that that I'm gone. I'm basically out of the country and just give me a give me a minute to get back to get situated and to uh, to dive back into that correspondence. But that's what's going on. And a lot of people also shifting forward from that. People keep asking me if it's too late to do this CASA call to action. It is absolutely not too late. You can always always send emails. Handwritten letters mailed are very very effective as well. Emails are very effective. Call your senators. Call them. Call your senators' offices and hope to educate them. A lot of people sent out emails, myself included, and a lot of people have been getting responses back. And there was one particular response that came back. Let me try to find it. Yeah, a fellow named Stefan uh, uh, emailed me and his uh, congressman, Denny, Denny Heck, and I don't know exactly where that is, Washington, D.C., member of Congress, Denny Heck, uh, replied to him and was kind of, it seemed really positive. Um, the, I'm going to read a little bit from it, but he goes basically over the regulations and uh, the proposed rule and what would happen, and my monitor brightness is way too high. Oh, sorry, that sucks. I am sorry. Oh, that's so much better. Better? Okay. Okay, that's so much better. So, a little bit in this letter, and he goes on, and he kind of recraps the F... Recraps? 
that's funny, recaps the FDA rules and, and you know what that would do to the vapor industry and this, that, and the other. And he says, in your letter, this is the, this is the, this is the member of Congress speaking, in your letter you mentioned the benefits of e-cigarettes to millions of prior smokers. While I recognize its importance, I do believe we must stay informed on the health issues surrounding e-cigarettes and make sure that we do not make any rash decisions in the matter. I mean, that's not a complete slam dunk, but that sounds like we really need, he wants to really understand what's going on. E-cigarettes are a relatively new product. While I, so, I see no reason for them to be taken off the market, I do believe we need a more systematic study of the long-term health effects of e-cigarettes. Yes, 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 Danny, Denny Heck gets it. They're a relatively new product. He sees no reason why they should be taken off the market, and he believes we need a more systematic study of the long-term effects of e-cigarettes. In the meantime, I appreciate you taking the time to share your story with me and how they have helped you. Should HR, 8, should HR 2058 come before the House of Representatives for a vote, I would be sure to keep your thoughts and personal experiences with vapor products in my mind. This, this is democracy in action, folks, and I know there's a lot of naysayers out there, and I'm a naysayer sometimes, where you go, the country's just fucked, and they don't listen to us, they're going to do whatever they want. Denny Heck wrote back to this fella Stefan and said, thank you for sharing your story. I agree with you. I don't think they should be taken off the market. And if this comes before the House of Representatives and we have to vote on it, I will keep your thoughts and your personal experiences with vapor products in my mind while that is happening. That, that is good. That is, I think that's fantastic. Do you think that's fantastic? I, I don't know. I kind of think that's, uh, I kind of think that's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Stefan, for, uh, for sending that my way. So there was, there was this lady in the comments of my YouTube videos, and she, uh, her name was Triangle Magpies, okay, and she left a very long comment on my YouTube without a ray for me to respond. And to me, that's the dumbest thing ever. I hate, generally, I just delete them. If someone goes on my YouTube and says, you're wrong about this, this, and this, I think you're a faggot, uh, whatever, asshole, eat a bag of dicks, and then they don't leave a way to reply, that's it. You're going to get deleted. So I deleted her comment, but not before I screen captured it so that I could read it and reply to you right now, Miss Triangle Magpie. So allow me to read this. Uh, she writes and says, and so this was after, this was posted on the FDA video that I did last Tuesday. Last Tuesday? What day is it right now? What year is it right now? Last Tuesday. She writes and says, well, after two and a half years of vaping, I have quit. So I'm like, ah, oh, okay, cool. And my respiratory system is all but fucked thanks to vaping. Yes, vaping. So far from saving my life, as so many vapors attest to, vaping has fucking destroyed me. I've been hacking up yellow and green and sometimes red shit for so long now, and I absolutely refuse to believe or even contemplate that vaping may be a contributing factor, if not the cause. How naive I was, how stupid I was. My pulmonologist said that I was inhaling so much moisture. M moisture? My pulmonologist said that I was inhaling so much moisture, not to mention other possible irritants that I may actually have been better off smoking. Her pulmonologist, according to her, if I'm believing what she's writing, her pulmonologist said that she should not have ever been vaping. She would have been better off smoking. You, sir, are not a doctor. You are a disgrace to fucking science. Believe it or not, do not be fooled, kids. The compounds found in e-juice are not safe for human consumption via the respiratory system. They may be deemed safe by the FDA, but this is via the digestive system. Never once has been, been officially stated that PG and VG are safe for inhaling. Hogwash, I say. Don't be fooled, kids. Your lungs can only function and thrive with oxygen. That's it. Fuck smoking and fuck vaping. I find this interesting here at the end where she says, it has never been officially stated that PG and VG are safe for inhaling. Ha, I have some news for you, Miss Triangle Magpies. November 4th, 2009, medicalnews.net, propylene glycol, the primary ingredient in electronic cigarettes, may be a powerful deterrent against pneumonia. 
influenza, and other respiratory diseases when vaporized and inhaled. Huh. Additionally, propylene glycol has been the main ingredient in asthma inhalers for fucking years. I don't see how this girl can be this uh, misinformed. Triangle magpies, please, please. You saying that there's nothing officially saying that PG and VG are safe for inhaling? You are wrong. You are just, just wrong. PG is an asthma inhalers. It's, uh, uh. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I'm going to link in the description to some resources that might interest you, Miss Triangle Magpie, if you're still watching my videos for any reason whatsoever. Maybe not. Maybe you are. Maybe you're not. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm, uh, I'm done. I'm done talking to you. Last thing I want to do before we get to the beer segment is I want to talk about this Chicago tax that has happened recently. So a fella named Jason emailed me and he says, I, I watch your vids all the time. I heard you mention um, uh, there was not much about advocacy going on, but we have one that's going on in Chicago. It's a tax on e-juice. The proposal is a tax of 125, uh, $125, $1.25 cents for each e-cigarette cartridge and a 25 cent for each milliliter of e-liquid. Uh, so that means a $20 30 mil bottle would be $28.75 in Chicago. And uh, he linked me to this story. Chicago Alderman wants a uh, $1.25 tax on e-cigarettes, and it was supposed to be $0.25 cents for each mill of e-liquid. Well, unfortunately, Jason emailed me back recently, and he says, it's worse than we originally thought. The tax is now $0.55 cents per mill. That's sixteen fifty in taxes on every 30 mil bottle of juice. Vape shops may be able to get around this by selling zero nick juice with a side small bottle of nicotine. I'm just guessing, but it doesn't seem safe no matter. If the tax sticks, vape shops will be gone in Chicago within the next few months months. Now, I've been trying to figure out if this happened, if this actually went through or not, and I couldn't I couldn't find anything as to whether or not this actually passed or not, and so I ran across uh, Chicago Rod, Rodney on uh, on Facebook, and he had posted something about uh, fighting the county tax on e-liquid in Chicago. Please let us know what happened from the city of Chicago. Uh, Val had asked, did this pass? And he said, uh, it's still up for another hearing. So, what you can do, there's no CASA call to action on this. This is at least that I can find. If I can find one, I'll post it, but I don't believe there is right now. Uh, you know, CASA is just volunteers. They're not going to be able to catch every possible thing that happens. But if this hasn't passed in Chicago, you need to, we need to contact our representatives in Chicago, our senators, our health committee members in Chicago. Tell them your story exactly like we're doing with the FDA. Tell them that this would not only cripple vaping in Chicago, it would completely, I mean, vape shops would be closing. People would be out of work. People, I mean, it's ridiculous to have that much of a tax. Uh, additionally, there's a couple states now as it stands that we can't ship e-liquid to because of the taxes going on there, because of the regulations going on there. Chicago might fall into one of those, sorry, we can't ship e-liquid to you because of your crazy city's uh, laws. So if you're in Chicago, dig into this, look into this, see what you can do, talk to your senators, talk to your local health officials, your local congressmen, uh, things like that. So yeah, sad. That's it, It's rough. And it's he doubled it. <laughs> it was supposed to be 25 cents a mil. If it goes through, it's 55 cents a mil. You're going to be paying almost $17 just for taxes on a 30 mil bottle. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. But, 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 but. That's good. That's all out of the way. Oh, I skipped what I've been vaping. Let's do that real fast. Let's do that real fast before we uh, before we get to beer. So I've been vaping a few things. Still on the on the Wismec Rulu. I'm pronouncing it correctly now, Jabo. The Rulu. Um, got the Rulu uh, Triple 18650 DNA 200. I have the Jabo Indestructible Addy. I have a uh, cap from Double Helix Designs, Jess Marie. And I have the Horror of Yig Juice, which is, you know, I don't know. I don't want to go on and on about it. It's just one of my favorite juices of all time. Uh, hashtag Team Single Coil because I just have a single coil uh, f dual fuse Clapton in here. And I say dual, but it's not dual coil. It's dual core. 
dual core fused Clapton, uh, 0.4 ohm, 71 watts. It's just a great vape. It's delightful. This is one of the things I'm going to be bringing with me to VPX because I like that I can just look in the top through that double helix designs drip tip and just pour juice right on that one coil and just mm. vape capital. I like it. I like it a lot. That's what I've been vaping. Rocking the Surik box. Oh, the Surik box. Uh, Petri version 1.5 on here. I have the original Tears in Heaven build that Omboy OC did for me at VaporCon West. I've been keeping this build alive since VaporCon freaking West, and that was in July. Still rocking it. Uh, Rainbow Sherbet in the dark. Um, the Surik X is a regulated device. I believe I've talked about it before, but there's no... I don't know what I have it set to. I don't know the wattage right now. I've just adjusted it to taste. This is the uh, Dot Mod Petrie 1.5 with the cloud cap, which, okay, okay, I'm coming around on the cloud cap. I really... I like it. Both my Petries that I have out right now both have cloud caps on them. I don't... Oh, I do have one traditional Petrie back there. I need a black cloud cap. If Dot Mod's at VPX, I'm buying a black cloud cap. I don't even care. I just want it uh, because I need all the things to match all the time. Uh, plus, this setup, I think, just looks really cool. And this is a really good vape, too. Yeah. Oh, it's good. I haven't vaped in, like, an hour. I've just been running around like crazy. And lastly, uh, Jabo, Jabo with the noisy cricket. Um, this is the, <laughs> this is the, uh, what, what atomizer is this? Phenotype. This is the Phenotype L. This is the Phenotype L. Got some Glacier Banana on it. I have this built for a series box, and it's amazing. Little interesting tidbit uh, that I don't necessarily want to put in the review, but I'm going to say it right now. All your tugboat caps, this tugboat cap right here, this tugboat anarchist cap, yeah, fits on the phenotype. Shh, don't tell anyone, but they totally, totally, totally fit on the phenotype. It's a little, it's a little, it's a little snug, but they totally fit. Now I can have that rad two post design of the phenotype with my favorite ever airflow of the tugboat anarchist cap. It's good. It's good. It's good. I still haven't decided what vape gear I'm going to bring to New Orleans. I want to travel lightly. I want to travel with like two mods and then a couple atomizers and that's it. Like I don't want to bring the whole kit and caboodle. I always end up way, way overpacking for every vape meet I go to. So yeah, that's where we are right now. Uh, Real quick, one more thing before we go to the beer section. I don't have a, a retro vaping. So every, anybody looking forward to the retro vaping, I'm sorry. I don't have a retro vaping, and I don't have a reviews for th never, things that never got reviewed. What I have is, of course, I'm addicted to new segments. I'm throwing in a new segment. Uh, we'll see it towards the end. It's called Review Rewind, and I'm going to be re-talking about something that I reviewed uh, recently because new information has come to light. Uh, maybe I didn't have all the facts when that review happened, and now I have some more information. And so we're going to do a Review Rewind, and I'm going to be uploading it as a separate video rather than a first impressions. I have this all ah, I have this all planned out in my head. Uh, I think it's going to be I think it's just going to be great. But what I want to do now over there, over here, the beer section. All right, well let's drink some beer because I am parched. So this bottle of beer came to me from uh, from Preston. Preston sent this along when he sent along the skateboard from Real Talk Skateboards. He sent me his favorite beer, which is very very cool. I'd never heard of it before. It says it's brewed in Stratford, Connecticut. Love Connecticut. Loved going up there with Ruby Roo. Had a great time, and they had really good beers up there. I'm really looking forward to this. Um, it's not necessarily a dark, dark beer like I'm usually used to drinking, but thankfully they did top it with a regular, you know, beer cap instead of a, uh, well, instead of a cork because corks are, corks are just pure, 100% pure evil. I don't know anything about this beer, so what I'm going to do is get over to the beer uh, advocate site. This is called Via Cordes Abbey Blonde. Two Roads Brewing Company out of Connecticut. Uh, Catholic monasteries were historically major centers of brewing and learning. Their educational model evolved into the modern university. Two Roads Brewers 
and some beer-loving professors at Sacred Heart University Biology Department collaborated to brew this beer in celebration of that history. It is fermented with a yeast strain from centuries-old Masonic Brewery, currently operating in Belgium. Oh, This abbey is single-brewed to be distinctive in flavor, yet approachable and refreshing. It's got an 84-86% score on the Beer Advocate. I'm going to be pouring this into my absolute favorite modern times glass once again not over my keyboard <sighs> that still bums me out but we'll get to that in the shout outs i actually have a pretty funny video that a fella made about the keyboard brewing the keyboard pouring quite the head on there i don't know if i'm gonna be able to drink through this like a man ruby Roo, but it's a very uh, sort of opaque yellowy amber color in there Via Cordes. Uh, let's see what one of the top reviewers over here on Beer Advocate says. Uh, nice and fluffy air. Uh, one finger head that does fade at a medium pace with nice lacing. Semi-golden Pilsner color. Is that what that color is? Is that a Pilsner color, Beer World? Uh, tastes start with more blonde malts. Uh, toasty Pilsner-like creamy. A little straw, some sweet candy uh, notes. Uh, but not a caramel sweetness like a blonde candy sugar. Little orange cream and side notes. Uh, some phenols, mild ap apple candy and spices. Phenols, so if he's using phenols the same way that we used to use phenols in coffee tasting, that's a negative attribute. In coffee, a phenol is an, a negative attribute. In, in beer, it's possibly a, a positive attribute. Mild apple candy and spices. Coriander. Uh, faintly fruity esters. Mild, grassy, spicy hops. Fair bitterness. Finish is mild and sweet. All right. Well, there you go. All right. Thank you so much, Preston, for sending this over. You really, I mean, you really didn't have to. It's... It's super cool. Uh, thank you. Here's uh, here's here's happy November, everybody. Cheers. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. It tastes like an Abbey. It's not really super stellar. Ah, sorry, sorry, Preston. Sorry if this is your favorite beer, bud. I mean, it's good. It's very very drinkable. I'm gonna drink this whole this whole bottle tonight. Um, I get a little, a very slight upfront sweetness. It's got a sort of citrusy, uh, you know, Belgian Abbey style uh, mouthfeel, my citrusy flavor. It's kind of uh, acidic in a positive way that it hits me in my jowls right there. But the, the finish on it is very, very uh, clean. It's not very heavy or syrupy feeling in your mouth when you're, when you're tasting it. It feels very light and effervescent. Everybody drink. effervescent everybody drink again i don't know if i have anything in front of me that would even remotely pair with this let's try sherbet let's try sherbet in the dark actually you know what before we try sherbet let's try uh let's try this juice i think this juice might be good i think this juice might just pair really really well this is dynamite fuse and i think this might be a good uh i think this might be a good example of a good pairing Good pairing. This is a what? What is what is fuse again? What's fuse again? Strawberry uh, hibiscus. Strawberry hibiscus. Sweet strawberry hibiscus. Let's try some sweet strawberry hibiscus with this uh, Via Cordius uh, Abbey Blonde Ale. Pardon me. I'm about to burp. I'm apologizing in advance. So she could rub it. Oh, and everybody, sorry. Whew, that was really bad. Here we go. Dynamite fuse Via Cordius. I like that. Shit, I like that a lot. <sighs> I do. I really like that. I th I'm not even going to bother with the sherbet in the dark. I think the sherbet in the dark would pair fine, but right now, this is it. Dynamite Fuse. Fuse? Nope. Dynamite Ignite. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. Dynamite Ignite. And the uh, Via Cordius. Really, really good. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that for that pairing. That pairing was made possible by Dynamite E-Liquid. 
as well as uh, Preston and Two Roads out of Connecticut. This is delicious. I'm going to continue to consume this as we continue on to the vlog, but uh, after beer, you know what we always do? We do shout outs, and I think I'm losing the hoodie right now. It is shout out time. Mm, you know, I used to rock a backwards hat all the time. It was the only way that I would wear hats. I mean, high school, after high school, all I did was rock backwards hats, and I can't it just looks so unnatural right now. I don't think I can pull it off. All right, let's get into some shout outs. First shout out that I have to do is from uh, a fellow named Mike. So Mike approached me and said, hey, I have a mod. Um, I want to trade you for it. I want to trade you something. My wife desperately needs something to vape. I have this, this mod uh, that I got for her, but it's too big. She doesn't like it. And I want to send it to you because I think it would be perfect for you. If you have anything you want to part with, then absolutely we can trade. And I'm like, like, yeah, I have, I have a bunch of stuff to give away. So I gave him, what did I send him? I don't want to ruin the surprise. There was a Cool Fire version four in there. Uh, there was a different sub ohm tank in there. There was an I Just Two kit, and I think there was something else in there. But I sent him some starter stuff, you know, for his wife. And I wanted to give him and his wife a shout out right now. He sent me this. Do you see this? Yeah, that's a. I hate, I hate that I can't focus. Forecasts. Uh, this is a Stormtrooper box mod, and this came from outliermods.com, and I believe it to be a Hammond box. I don't know if this is like a custom CNC enclosure or anything like that. It kind of, well, no, I don't know. I can't tell. It looks like a Hammond box. It feels like a Hammond box. It has a voltage display on the inside. I'm rocking it currently with the Selenoid RDA on top, which I am not... Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this RDA. It's okay. We're going to have a review for it later, but I'm not a huge fan of this RDA. But yeah, it's just, you know, magnetic enclosure, dual parallel, unregulated, 18650, and yeah, it's kind of big. I could see this not being comfortable if you are, you know, you have smaller hands, you know, than me. Not saying I have, like, giant hands or anything, but yeah, it's big. Uh, I love the Stormtrooper graphic on it. I think that is just so effing cool. I'm not a huge fan of this button, but it works, and it's it's been great. So, absolutely. Uh, I'll post a link in the description. You know what? Outliermods.com. I'm not sure how much he sells these. Uh, not sure how much he sells these devices for. Unregulated box mod. Yeah, hundred bucks for a dual twenty six six fifty. <laughs> hundred bucks dual eighteen six fifty parallel box. Uh, like I said, solenoids on here. Uh, I got some crazy juice from Southern Tradition Apple Pie Moonshine. Oh, I bet that would be good with this beer. Flashback. Eh, okay, it's not amazing. It was good. I really thought that would be good. But yeah, it's been awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I just love the I love the graphics on here. I think it's super cool. So definitely, definitely shout out to you and your wife. Thank you so much for uh, for sending this my way. Now we got some other shout outs to do. That was for Mike. Mike. Uh, thank you for the Stormtrooper mod. I hope your wife enjoys the devices that I sent over to her. Uh, next is next up is Eric. So I made a comment in one of my recent uh, vlog videos because I transitioned where the camera is, you see. So the camera's over here on the left side now. So it's not directly in front of me. So when I pour the beer, I'm not pouring it over my keyboard. And I said, wow, I feel like it's like the end of an era. I've been pouring over my keyboard for years now, two years, two plus years, I've been pouring beer over my keyboard. Felt like I was coming to the end of an era. So this fella, this guy, what was your name, guy, you guy, Eric, put together, it's kind of a longish video, I'm not going to lie. It's an 11, it's 11 and a half minute long video, but it's called Grim Green Beer and Keyboard, The End of of an era and it's me and pouring and clips from my vlog mixed with like clips from like the big Lebowski it's just so it's just so random I'm gonna post a link to it in the description but absolutely Eric absolutely Eric consider yourself uh, consider yourself shouted out so this is a this is a shout out I got uh, I just got today so I'm gonna read it there you go uh, David writes to me and says, uh, I can't imagine it's very likely you'll get around to reading this. That is false, David. That is false. I know how many billions of emails you receive. It's not billions. It's millions. But if you do read this, uh, could you give a, it is shout out time to my brother-in-law, Rick, and his wife, 
my sister Amy in your next vlog. Absolutely, you are both shouted out, as well as you, David. I love them both so dearly, and I was super excited learning that Rick had just started vaping, and Amy seems to be interested as well. Both of them would dabble with cigarettes here and there, especially when we'd go out partying. Yep, that's how it starts. And Rick loves his pipe tobacco collection, so hearing Rick tell me he had just picked up a little Kanger Tech Nano made me smile. I've sort of been pushing vaping onto Rick for a while now because I know Rick is a man who loves his hobbies, from gaming to brewing his own beer. So in addition, in addition to being a great alternative to tobacco, I wanted to know that vaping can be a really cool hobby as well. Absolutely. Your videos and encouragement helped me get over the annoying stigma that vaping means that vaping is a means of seeking attention or trying to be cooler than the rest. Absolutely not. Vaping is not trying to be cooler than anybody, trust me. It helps me quit cigarettes for fuck's sake. That's what it's about at the end of the day, and now I can unabashedly share that with others. Needless to say, the community in general is just the best. Absolutely. Rick, Amy, David, you guys are all, consider yourselves all shouted out. Now, I do have an older one in here. I do have an older one in here I wanted to get to. Uh, James. Was it James? James wrote to me and said, hey, my name is James and my girlfriend Elizabeth. Uh, my girlfriend, okay, let me start over. Let me just pause for a second. Hey, Nick, my name is James. Me and my girlfriend Elizabeth met at a clutch show in Richmond about three years ago. That's cool. That's all he had. That's all he had to write to get me to give him a shout out. We kept in contact a couple of months after, and then afterward we started dating. At the time, we were both pack and a half in a day, pack a half, pack and a half a day smokers. But shortly after we started uh, dating, we decided we were both going to quit, and we were going to do it together. We watched a couple of your videos and got a couple ego setups. I've been smoke free for about two and a half years now. We love uh, your videos and we watch your vlog every Thursday on our TV. We have recently converted one of our good friends, Ryan, by showing him your videos and he thought he would also give it a try. Uh, we love your videos and vaping is now something we can bond over as well as good music, which you like as well. I do. I like Clutch. I was just rocking the Clutch shirt. Now I'm rocking a vaping monkey shirt. Vaping is a crime I killed tobacco. But, yes, clutch, 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 clutch. Give me all the clutch things in my ear. It's Elizabeth's birthday on the 27th. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I missed your birthday, Elizabeth. I'm so sorry. It was last week. It was last week. I apologize, Elizabeth. We had a lot going on with the FDA last week, Elizabeth. Uh, so I apologize. Um, it's Elizabeth's birthday on the 27th. I picked up an iStick 100 watt and a Mutation X for her. I also picked up a Tesla Invader 2 and a Royal Hunter Mini for me. It would mean the world if you could give her a shout out in one of your vlogs. She would be so surprised and the look on her face would be priceless. Look now. That's when you look at her face. I would be so happy if you could do this for her. But I get that you get a lot of emails, so uh, it's fine if you can't. I just really appreciate that you helped us kick cigarettes. Absolutely. Absolutely, Elizabeth. Happy birthday. Hope you enjoy your 100 watt. Hope you enjoy your Mutation X version 4. Absolutely, James. Consider yourself shouted out. Both of you need to go pause the vlog right now. Go listen to Clutch. Put Clutch on in the background while you're listening to the vlog. Listen to Clutch and the vlog at the same time. If you listen to this vlog with Psychic Warfare, it kind of goes together. Like Pink Floyd and, you know, that one movie, The Wizard of Oz. This vlog and Psychic Warfare go together. Think about it. Crazy. Some mind-blowing stuff here. Let me get one more shout-out. Let me get one more shout-out. So this is going all the way back into uh, August area. Ethan wrote to me and uh, said, Hey Nick, my name is Ethan. I'm wondering if I could get a shout-out on a future vlog. My one-year vape anniversary is coming up in September. Happy vape anniversary. I was a pack-and-a-half-a-day smoker for eight years. I was inspired to quit after having our first child and not wanting him to grow up seeing me smoking. Absolutely. I've never made a better decision in my life. I watch all your videos, and I put a lot of stock in your opinion. I'm also a rather big uh, Namber Juice fan, shameless plug, and beer lover. Sorry this email is running long. It's not. This is one of the shortest emails I've ever got. But if you could also shout out my wife, Laura, for putting up with my obsession with vaping, it would be much, much appreciated. Take care and be well, as always. Yes, let's keep on vaping. Absolutely. Ethan, Laura, consider yourselves both shouted out. Laura, thank you for putting up with Ethan's uh, vaping just nonsense. I know how it gets. I know how it can get sometimes when people get in their little vapey zone and they're like, no, I have to rewick this tonight. I have to rebuild this tonight. I saw a new build and now I have to get out my drill and you know, bang out a, a stitched alien coil at three in the morning. I get it. I get that. And I get that. So 
I think that's awesome that you put up with that. I think that's what uh, I think that's all we got. Uh, I think that's all we got for shout outs right now because we have we're going to have a really long first impression segment, man. I've got a lot of first impressions to do, so you know what? Let's just get there now. All right, well, let's start getting through these first impressions. Well, quick, let me have a little quick sip of beer. Come on. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so first impression. So this, posted a picture of this on Instagram. This is a little Kanger Tech NE box. I've been calling it the Knee Box, but I've heard other people call it the NE Box. And Knee Box, NE Box, uh, I like calling it the NE Box. Um, now, on Kanger's site, it says they're $78, but I've been seeing them around for like 60 bucks, like 60, 65 bucks. So what is this? Now, this is kind of one of those all-in-one devices like the, uh, what was that? The Joytech E-Grip. It's like a big Joytech E-Grip. It's got a full 10 mil tank on the side. Now, this tank is plastic. It's not glass. And I foresee this tank being difficult to clean. It's not like a normal tank where you can take it apart and rinse it all underwater and dry it all off and have a completely fresh flavor. I have Milk Plus in here. And I have a feeling that even if I can get in there with like a paper towel, like a wet paper towel, and rinse it all out and then rinse out the base i'm still even if i put a new coil head i have a feeling there's going to be trace elements of milk plus in everything i vape in this for the rest of my life it's a temperature control device i have a titanium coil head in here right now i have it set to 470 degrees i have it set to 45 watts the resistance of the coil head is 0 0.8 ohms it's been really, really good, man. Now, I've only had this a couple days, but it has been stellar. Just stellar. My favorite dot mod drip tips don't fit in here, which is a shame because I have a sweet red dot mod drip tip that would look awesome in here, but the little black jobber, it, it gets the job done. It works good. And people were telling me on Facebook, they said, oh, be careful. Be careful that any box leaks like crazy. It just leaks everywhere. I have not had one drop, one molecule well maybe a molecule one speck of juice anywhere anywhere and so i saw these comments on facebook i'm like whoop okay so i was vaping it and vaping it and when i before i went to bed i put it in my sink just to let it sit overnight to see if it's going to leak anywhere came up the next morning going okay what happened dry just dry everywhere now there's a compartment here for the 18650 but it does charge via usb you have up-down buttons, nice bright display, and the fire button's right there. Now there's a slot here where you can unscrew the bottom to replace your coil heads or to fill up the tank. This is where all your airflow comes, this hole right here. There's a hole right there, that's where all your airflow's coming in. And it's pretty open, swooshy airflow. Wow, it's so it's really good. It's just really good. I've really, really been enjoying this. I rocked this in the car all the way up to uh, what vape meet was that at RJ Vapes, the VPX pre-party. Rocked this in the car the whole way. Rocked this in the car the whole way home. That's why the battery's basically dying, but it's a great vape. The airflow is nice. It's, it's not mouth to lung. It is straight, straight lung. It feels like a sub-ohm tank. It feels like, you know, the Kanger sub-tank in this, like, cool rounded roundy package i think it's so far so far it's been pretty freaking awesome have got no dry hits have got no gurgly hits it's just been fantastic and the first time i saw that knee box or any box on red it looked like netflix in fact when i still see it because it starts with an n and ends with an x i just see netflix on the red box it just says netflix White box would be really cool to have. Now, I thought these were plastic. Um, looking at the website and looking at the pictures, pictures, just looks like it's plastic. Ooh, the all black one is cool. No, I'd have to go white. I would have to go white with one of these. I might buy a white one, but the red one is very, very cool as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. Red one is very, very cool as well. And when I first saw pictures of it, it looked like it was plastic. It's not. It's all metal. It's a metal 
housing. It's a metal body. It's a metal frame. It feels very, especially once you get juice and a battery in there, it feels very, very substantial. And like I said, the vape on it is great. I've really, I've, I've been loving this, loving this. And it's funny because I get products and this is one of those vape reviewer, first world problem things. I get vape products that I'm not super pumped on, but they send me like 10 of them. So I'm like, well, I'm going to give all these away. This is something I am super pumped on and I got one. And I'm like, if I had like five more of these, I could think of at least 50 people that I would give these to. I would give this to my smoker hair barber friend. I would give this to my brother. I would give this to my brother's wife. There's so many people that need this vape. Sorry, sorry, beer segment. Straight mouth to lung, nice long lasting battery, temperature control, variable wattage. It's easy to use. It's easy to fill. You just, you just press the button and vape it. But as with all my first impressions, I'm going to need to spend a lot more time with the little Kanger NE box here. But so far, man, so far, I've really been loving it. Next up, let's go from that to this. Now, this came in from Wismec. Wismec. Jabo corrected me. It's Wismec. And this, this is not, what is the name of this? This is the Pressa. The Wismec Pressa. Little display right here, a lot like that, uh, you know, what's that device? The Evic VT or the Evic VT Mini, similar. On the top, it shows you your watts. In the middle, it shows you your volts. It shows you your ohms, and then it shows you your amps, and then it shows you a little stripe for battery life. Adjustable up and down, and I'm looking at this. I first picked it up, I'm like, I don't see a button at all. But what you do is the whole face of this is the button. You just squeeze it, and it clicks. How clicky and great is that button? Let's pop the back off, single 18650 on the inside. I don't know how high the wattage goes, so let's see. 75 watts, two, three, four, five. Yep, max wattage is uh, 75 watts, which is not bad off of single 18650 battery. That's what, that seems to be the, that seems to be the, the you know, the, the general single 18650 regulated mod. Yeah, you're gonna get about 75 watts, which is great. I've been rocking it at around 50 watts because of the tank I have on here. We're gonna talk about this tank in a second. This has been just a joy to use. It's not much to look at. I get that. It's just a thing and it's a thing. But I, I, I hate to sound like I'm just all over Jabo's sack, but the stuff he designs is just beautiful to use and beautiful to use, beautiful to hold. It's got this really nice anodized finish on it. It feels a lot, feels kind of like that Rulu a little bit. It's a little bit softer than the Rulu. I don't know if they're using a different... Uh, different finish on there, but the button, if if this didn't click, if this was just sloppy and like pushed in and then you, you vaped it, the fact that it clicks, oh, it just makes me so happy. This has been, I've, I've been having an amazing time with this device. It's just so ergonomically fucking cool. It's just that clicky button and it just surprised the hell out of me right out of the box. I did not have high expectations for this, especially from looking at the pictures. I was like, eh, it looks like a dumb thing. Like I wasn't, it wasn't even on my radar. I'm like, meh, I don't care if I ever use that or review it. I am so glad I got to try this out. It's got a physical locking switch up there. So you flip this little switch, can't even press it anymore. Flip it, and now you can click it. It also has one, two, three, four, five. Five on, five off. One, two, three, four, five. Five on, five off. Like that, or you can just lock it and not use it. And I've been using this. I've been using this all day. And it's a combination of this, and it's a combination of this beautiful tank. So that's what I got. That's what I got for the Wismec right now. That's what I got for the Pressa. Obviously, yes. Like all my first impressions, I can't say this enough. I'll need to spend more time with it before I feel comfortable making a full video for it. But so far, this, this has been pretty freaking fantastic. I'm going to post a link in the description to the Wismec site where you can check it out if you're, if you're so interested. So this next thing that I got, this tank right here, boy. At first, I was disappointed. And I'll tell you why I was disappointed. Because didn't the Zephyrus, like, just come out? Like, didn't we just have the Zephyrus, like, six months ago? Like, five months ago? Like, maybe even four months ago was the Zephyrus? The Zephyrus version 2 is out. And it's basically everything you like about the Zephyrus. It's the same deck. 
same everything has these new coil heads and the new coil heads look scary i didn't even want to use them it's like spaced uh wires you can see it it's spaced wires spaced dual coil with just a whole wads of cotton in there and there's cotton kind of covering the coils and i'm like bah, i'm just gonna build this built it exactly like i used to do with you know the goblin mini or the original zephyrus that same build dual coils close you pack the cotton in you fold them up you cut them off, you press them back down. Amazing. Amazing wicking, amazing airflow, amazing flavor. So far, it's been fantastic. It's exactly like the Zephyrus that we know and love that we've all had before. And now it has a top fill feature. And I'm not going to make the same mistake I did in my review video with the seven sub ohm tanks where I dumped out juice. But it's the same idea. Do you see these two notches right here? Can you see those in the light? Well, you twist this counterclockwise and those open up. And I'm not going to try not to dump any juice out here, but those open up. Do you see them opened up? And there's little, there's rubber, uh, red rubber silicone around it, so it's like a tight fit. And then you take your juice. Where's my juice? Let me fill this up. Let me take my juice. You kind of have to take off the drip tip to do it, but you take your juice, you put the tip in here, you squeeze like a crazy person, squeeze, 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 squeeze. And when you get to the glass, when you get to the top of the glass, you keep going. I keep going until I see juice start to come out of the air hole. Come out of the air hole, juice, because there's extra room up there. There it is. And then you release. Sucks a little bit of juice back in. Boom. You just twist it clockwise. Clean. There's no, I don't know why I try to zoom up like that. It's clean. There's no like residual juice or anything on the top. Put my drip tip back on and now I have a freaking full tank. The airflow is just great. Now, the airflow is not going to be great if you don't wick it properly. And when I do a review for this, I'll have to show you again. I mean, not that, not, I mean, who the fuck am I? But I'll have to show you again how I do it because the way that I do it, I feel like it's a really good balance of cotton and airflow. You have to leave room around your coils for airflow to happen. You place your coils right over the airflow holes and airflow has to come in and around. And if you bog that up with, with cotton or your coils are too low against there, it's going to create a stiffer airflow. As it stands, the airflow right now, all full the way open, is just awesome. Oh, and my whisk neck was locked. Oh, I love it. I love it. I want to take this to Nola so bad. So bad. I want to take this combo. I think I'm going to take it. I'm just going to take it. F it. F the world. F everything. I'm going to take this and I don't care. It's just such a good, it's just such a good vape right now. This combo and the Zephyrus version two. Now the Zephyrus version two, no idea how much it's going to cost. Uh, the only place I could find it was Origin Vape. They seem to be sold out, although it already has five reviews. This tank is a sample. Okay, so this could be a sample unit. Please don't change anything, Yud. Yud, just listen. Don't change anything. It's great. It's great. It's just great the way it is. Don't change a damn thing on the Zephyrus version 2. In fact, just leave this. Just make this the last tank you make, okay? Zephyrus version 2 is fine. Just call it good there and sell a bajillion Zephyrus version 2s. Like I said, so far it's been great. And again, as always, what am I going to say? Guess what I'm going to say. As with all my first impressions, I need to spend way more time with this tank to see how it performs in the real world. Left the black O-rings on there because I think it looks kind of cooler. A little bit, a little bit classier maybe than just bright blue or bright red. I like the, I like the black on there. But, oh man, the, I have not put this down all day. All day I have not put this down. So moving forward from there, I got two more first impressions to do for you. So this is a new mechanical mod made by Steve the Machinist. See how the top looks like a Kennedy? Yeah, that's because it's a Kennedy. It's a Kennedy mech mod. So I heard some stories, some old wives' tales, if you will, about this device. I heard that Steve the Machinist was working in his machine shop really late one night, and he was trying to crank out as many brass Kennedys as he possibly could because he was running behind on order. So he's just cranking out brass Kennedys, cranking out bass Kennedys. While he wasn't paying attention, he was machining a Kennedy atomizer and it fed way too much tube in there. And he pulled it off and went, man, I messed up this Kennedy. 
And someone told him, a little heavenly visitor whispered in his ear and said, that could be a mech mod. And thus the ruby was born. And that's basically what it is. The whole top of this is one piece. The deck and the airflow are all part of the mod. There's no atomizer to take off. It's just all one piece. And you put your Kennedy cap on there. It's nice and seamless, 24 millimeters around, that Kennedy airflow that we love and are used to. And now it's it looks like a Kennedy that's just way too tall. That's basically what it looks like. It looks like a Kennedy that's just way too tall. And it's a full mech mod. There's vent holes along here machined into the bottom. And then there's a switch on the bottom. Let me grab my screwdriver real fast. Because the switch, although there's an X on it, it's not super comfortable to press. It's not like uncomfortable to press. It's just not comfortable. Like I'm used to these mech mods, um, like the Rune one from Beyond Vape, where the bottom of the button is just concave and so smooth, and you just press it and you go, "Oh yeah, that is that is a mech mod button." This one is very rigidly machined. It's just got <laughs> X on there, so when you press it, you can feel that little X. But I'm going to use a screwdriver just because it's faster. You can use your fingers to do this too. You pop this out, and that's how you adjust for battery rattle, is this. That's it. This screws in. You stop when you get to your battery. When it's snug, that's when you stop. And this switch, and there's a little O-ring on here that presses against your battery. The switch is all one piece. You press it in, you twist it, you pull it out, and that's it. There's nothing to unscrew on the bottom. You can clean everything in there. There's your spring right there. This is all one piece, bottom switch and contact. You put it in like this. You twist it back to where it was in the other position. And now your switch is back together. And now I have a uh, Samsung 25R battery in here. And I'm going to screw this in just with my fingers. I'm not going to use a screwdriver. We'll do it the slow way. I'm just going to go with my fingers. That was lightning. Did you guys all see that lightning? Because that scared the hell out of me. I'm just going to go with my fingers as tight as I can. And that's it. We are taken up for battery rattle. We can press the button now. Um, I have a 6-wrap 24-gauge parallel build on here. Uh, I've been getting into parallel builds again because I think they work really, really well for mech mods. Um, I'm going to do some fiddling and experimenting and learn how to build these a little bit quicker and see if there's a quicker way to do it. But... As it stands, I think a parallel build is awesome for a mech mod. Um, I don't know the resistance. I just guessed at the resistance um, because I don't have a way to check the resistance. There's no way to plug this on to a to an ohm checker. But it's great. I get nice warm vapor. I don't get any hot button issues. The thing is machined out so well that I get zero hot button issues. I know this thing just came out. I might take it with me to NOLA. I've just, I've been having a little bit of a love affair with it. I wish it wasn't in brass. Steve, the machinist, if you're watching, or you, heavenly angel that whispered in Steve's ear that night in the machine shop, stainless steel. Just, I want a stainless steel one. Just, I know you're doing them in brass. Make me stainless steel. Let me check on your website. Do you have them in stainless steel? Yeah, you do. I want a stainless steel one. I... Wow. So, okay, this isn't a review. You're going to need your vape budget hands fucking forever on this one. 235. God, 235. 235 is expensive. 235 is really expensive. It's the Kennedy, it's called the Ruby. I'm glad you didn't call it the Kennedy Mech Mod. It's called the Ruby. All one piece. I've just been having a love affair with it lately. And there's some more lightning. $235 is a lot of scratch, Steve. That's a lot of Skrilla to ask for. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, it's the Ruby. Once again, as with all my first impressions, I need to spend way more time with this. I took a picture of it earlier, and it was all nice and shiny. And then throughout the course of the day, it's become sort of dull. And I have a feeling it's going to have just that dull brass finish that brass mech mods have. Uh, I would love to get this and do that squid dude method and just really polish it up, make it look like a trumpet, but dude, it's been so great.
Love it. I've been having I've been having a great time. Been having a great time with that. Okay, I do have one one last first impression. And I've been saving this for last because it's just so freaking cool. Remember last week? Remember last week? Uh, last week or the week before? Last week I did this one, the Magnum with the Delrin body and the wood and the the thing on here. Um, nope, that's a lie. I have two more first impressions. Told you I had a lot of first impressions. Let's do this. Let's do the atomizer that's on here right now. So last week I did this. Last week I did this. Well, this week I have this. So this is also called the Magnum Mod. Is this called the Magnum Mod? No, this is called the Magnum 357. This is called the Magnum Mod, made by Fourth Horseman Customs. Now, this is pre-order only right now, and it's the same idea. It looks like a handle, right? This is all metal. All of this is metal. The top and bottom are metal. The whole body is metal. The switch is metal. With even without batteries in this, it's heavy. <laughs> it is a really, really heavy mod, but it's got a different style trigger on there. It's a fully mechanical uh, mod, and it's got a different style trigger on there, and it feels clicky. I feel like this is a full mechanical, but I feel a little bit of clickness in there. Let me check on the website real fast. It's all made out of aircraft aluminum, high-grade brass bottom plate, high-grade copper contacts, brass, uh, high-grade, high-grade, everything's high-grade. Yeah, fully mechanical, dual 18650 parallel. It hits... Uh, pretty good. I spent most of today trying to compare because I know last week I was like, this one hits just so good like Godzilla. Does it still does. This one hits, this one hits uh probably equally as well. What's interesting about this is there's no screws to take out your batteries. What you do is you press this button right here. There's a very large protruding button on the left side. So if you're holding it in your left hand, you're gonna feel this big button against your palm. This is really a righty sort of device. It feels much more comfortable in my right hand than it does in my left hand. But you press this button and the clip comes out. And they engraved uh, Grim Green on mine, which again is always nice, but doesn't necessarily make it a good mod. And then you have two 18650 batteries in here. And they just pop in. You put both negative sides down, positive sides up. They just pop in. They're spring loaded down there in the bottom. You just load it like a gun, I guess. I've never actually loaded a gun. But you put it in there. Magnum, this is number four. Pop the bottom on like that, it locks back into place and you vape it. It's weird, man. It's so heavy. This is as heavy as a 44 mod. This is probably heavier than a 44 mod, but I mean, how cool does that look? It's got a Grim Reaper engraved on it. It says Fourth Horseman Customs, all engraved on there. It's all bright, shiny brass, black aircraft grade aluminum. Your atomizer sits at an angle. When you set it down on a table, it sits at a little bit of an angle. But that's, I mean, when you're vaping it, nah, that doesn't matter because you're holding it. You're not holding it like this. You're holding it like this, which straightens out your RDA. Anyway, like all my first impressions, I'm going to spend way more time with this. The asking price on this is $299.99. 300 bills large, son. That is, uh, that is just crazy. The only issues I've ran into so far are this button doesn't necessarily work all the time. Sometimes it's really hard to release the chamber out of here. I kind of have to... Uh, why can't I get you out now at all? See, I can't get the chamber out of here at all now. Why? Okay, there it goes. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I can't uh sometimes I can't get the chamber out, which, you know, if your batteries are if your batteries are uh, going venting on you, then uh, you need to get those batteries out of there pretty quick, and that was a bit of a struggle. But like with all my first impressions, I'm going to spend way more time with this before I feel comfortable giving it a, uh, a full review. But we'll go back to this one because of the atomizer that's on it. So this is the MNGT Atomizer from Shadow Vapor. And I've been fascinated with this since the second that I saw it online. It's a top-down airflow design, a lot like the Aeolus. I mean, the airflow is essentially the same as the Aeolus. 
It's nice, but it's not ideal. I don't like the top-down airflow anymore, and that's just the decision I've come to. I don't like the top-down airflow anymore because the air isn't directly hitting your coils. And for me, the air directly hitting your coils helps keep them a little bit cooler so that you can vape all the juice out of your cotton. Me, I get a dry hit on this, I look at my cotton, cotton's wet. Cool. It's just not wicking fast enough. It's not your coils are getting too hot too quickly. There's not enough air in there to cool down your coils. So the big selling point of this atomizer, and it is very, very cool, is the top cap is magnetic. Not this, but this. This top cap just, you pull it off like this. You see that? There's magnets here. There's magnets there. You can go bleh and drip your juice, and you just basically drop this back on. It auto-aligns your airflow and it's magnetized on there. I just keep taking it off and putting it back on again just because I find it so amusing. What you can do is push with your thumb and sort of, uh, well, if you're more skilled than I am, you spin it around like that. It can hang off the side and you can go bleh and drip your juice in there and then you flip it back shut and the magnet grabs. It does have an adjustable airflow. If you hold this ring right here, it moves the magnets around and you can close off, open up your airflow. Maybe I'll close it off just a little bit. Let's see how that works. Let me drip some juice in there. Uh, Ronan, Ronan hooked it up with some more juice and I'm just crushing it. That was lightning. That's a lot of lightning. Maybe I should turn off my computer now. I'm almost done with the vlog. Flavor's nice, performance is nice. I just, uh, I feel like my coils are getting too hot, just sitting in that cotton, getting too hot with no airflow going over them. I need the airflow. I need the airflow going over my coils, but it is still very, very cool. That magnetic drip tip on there, you just pop it off. You can see your coils. You just go, bleh, you put your juice in there. And every time you put this down, the magnets are going to hit the same way every time. It's going to auto align your airflow, and it just, it just works really, really cool. Now, I'm going to post a link in the description to the Shadow Vapor site as well as Kidney Puncher because I believe they will be selling this as well. Uh, not sure what the asking price is on this. They have an order now. It's only for pre-order. Okay, well, we'll see as time goes on. What's uh, what's going to be the uh, asking price for this? Because that's the, uh, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, I'm repeating myself again. That's the big question. MGNT atomizer from Shadow. Now remember they did that that mech mod a while back that I really uh, that I really really enjoyed. They have good quality stuff. So I have a feeling this is going to be mm, maybe a little bit on the expensive side. Maybe in like the 70 to 80 dollar range, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. I think it's going to be like 70 to 80 bucks. So yeah. That wraps up Finally, that wraps up our first impressions. Um, I do want to sort of start winding the vlog down. Uh, I want to end with my newest segment, Review Rewind. All right, so I got a new segment here called Review Rewind. So this is going to be a segment where I have reviewed something maybe within the last month or so, and I kind of want to revisit it, maybe just to clarify a couple things. So I'm going to upload this one as a separate video. This is going to be a companion to a video I just did. So I just did a video for this. This is the Vapor Shark DNA 200. And I was operating under the impression that this was the Vapor Shark DNA 200, and that's what I was reviewing. Turns out that that uh, isn't exactly the case. What I had was a pre production version of it. I didn't have an actual Vapor Shark DNA 200. Everything I was talking about, everything, everything. Everything I was talking about about this was not necessarily false, but just not as up to date and accurate as it could be. So, what happened? Well, I got a Vapor Shark, an actual production unit Vapor Shark DNA 200 in the mail, and it is. <laughs> It's like a completely different device. Like I said, I'm uploading this video as a separate video, as sort of an addendum to that other Vapor Shark DNA 200 video. I'm leaving that one up. I'm also going to direct people over here. So if you're coming over here for my Vapor Shark DNA 200 video, welcome. Here's some more information for you. So I decided to get on the phone with Vapor Shark and talk to them. I want to go, hi, Dwayne. 
Hi, oh boy, I say. I wanted to talk to them because what I had I thought was a regular version of the Vapor Shark. Turns out that that wasn't. I also wanted to address their safety concerns with the website. There were people going bananas in the comments saying that they had all their credit card info stolen and then someone spent $4,000 with their credit card and this, that, and the other. And they said, yeah, we had a security issue. Uh, a lot of Magento, which if you're not familiar with Magento, it's just like a, a back-end software, basically, site for e-commerce, um, got hacked into really bad. Target got hit really bad. Apple got hit really bad. A bunch of other companies, including Vaporshark, got hit really bad. And so they've updated all of that. They've transitioned the, the site completely to new servers using the whole new Magento 9.1 and there will be no further issues. And, you know, he was really beating himself about, you know, up about it over the phone. And I'm like, you know what, these, these things happen. It's not the first time that people have had their identity stolen. I mean, it sucks. It's happened to me. It happened to me while I was on vacation. I had my identity stolen, my credit card information stolen from shopping online. So shopping online is one of those things you just have to be careful, take the proper precautions, uh, and, and do what you can do. And I know for sure after talking on the Phone with with Brian from Vapor Shark that they are literally doing everything they can. So I'm going to compare these right now, and I'm going to give you some updated information. So the first difference that I noticed right away is that the production version of the Vapor Shark DNA 200 is like a pound lighter. It's unbelievable how much lighter this is. I didn't think there was a battery in it. There is actually the same exact battery in it. This one is machined out of aluminum. This one is stainless steel. The stainless steel one is just super heavy and weighty. And I got used to that. And now I have this one and it's just it's just so much lighter. It's so much more comfortable to manage, to like hold and be like, yeah, what's up? Vapor Shark. I'm just handling this and moving it around like crazy because it's so light. Additionally, the finish. The finish is completely different. One of the gripes I had in my original video was that the finish was coming off here. Feeling the new one, it's a completely different finish. It feels much, much softer. It's darker black that's for damn sure and it doesn't feel like rubber it's just softer it doesn't feel like rubber like remember the old egos used to feel like rubbery that's how this vapor shark what is now apparently the beta version felt it just felt rubbery like those old ego batteries this doesn't have a rubbery feel to it it has a just a soft finish feel to it screen still on the bottom and the screen looks brighter. It looks like a different shade of blue and you're not going to be able to see this on camera, but it looks like a completely different shade of blue than the other one. And so he was kind of telling me about what they did, how they machined the enclosure, um, and a bunch of other things that I had no idea that Vapor Shark was doing with their devices. And I was kind of like, why don't, why are you telling people that you're doing this to your devices? He's like, well, you know, we're trying to roll out this, that, and the other to inform the consumers like, hey, why should you buy a Vapor Shark DNA 200? They're actually doing a lot of really cool stuff. So the DNA 200 boards come from Evolve un programmed. And so what they're doing is they're getting pre-programmed boards from Evolve is my understanding. And it comes pre-programmed with profiles. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it comes pre-programmed with profiles in it. So I can't I can't get my eScribe software up right now. Can't get my eScribe software up, but it comes pre-programmed with three profiles in it. There's one profile for the Kanger Subtank uh, nickel coil. There's one for the Atlantis nickel coil and one for the Heracles nickel coil. And what they've done with these profiles is they've calculated the actual resistance of the atomizer so that when you're adjusting your temperature, if you're using a, and an, so let's say you're using a Kanger sub tank with a nickel coil head, that will be the absolute most accurate temperature limiting out of anything. It will be more accurate than other DNA 200s because they've programmed in, they've pre-programmed in the resistance of the tank. Additionally, they've pre-programmed in their internal resistance of the mod so that the wattage, the voltage, and the temperature are incredibly accurate. Now, this is something you can do in the eScribe software, but they have already 
pre-programmed this stuff into the device. So if you go on the eScribe software and you plug this in, you can see everything. You can see all the stuff on there. And it says, here's profile one, here's profile two, here's profile three, here's the internal resistance of your freaking mod. And so that's it just it just essentially makes everything much more accurate as far as wattage voltage and temperature protection and on the eScribe software there's a restore to default button which restores everything to the evolve defaults if you do that with a vapor shark it restores the defaults to the vapor shark defaults rather than the evolve default. So if you go in there and you start fucking with stuff and you start messing with stuff and you're like, oh, I messed up. I need to go back to default. And you press default. It's not going to go back to the Evolve. It's going to go back to the Vapor Shark defaults if you have your Vapor Shark plugged in. So you're going to get those profiles back. They already have the watt hour, the 10.5 watt hours calculated in on the battery. And uh, <laughs> it's just really, really cool. Additionally, they use different buttons, and I didn't know this, but they use different buttons, and I thought their buttons felt different, and I feel dumb because I don't have a tank on here. Let me plug this Zephyrus on here. Even though it's not temperature control or temperature limiting, I just want to, I just want to vape on this. I just want to vape on this Zephyrus on here. One, two, three, four, five. Let's turn the wad. Oops, I locked my wattage. How did I lock my wattage? What was I doing there? Let's turn the wattage all the way up to 50 bucks. 50 bucks, 50 watts. I thought their buttons felt a little bit different, and it turns out that they have custom DNA 200 boards made for them with completely different buttons. So the Vapor Shark buttons are going to feel different than every other DNA 200 device that exists that you can find they have they use completely completely different unique original buttons that's what allows it to have this bluey glowness around the button right there how have i not got to the wattage that i want to be at yet Ugh, 50 watts was that too hard to ask vapor shark dna 200 good that's a good vape the screen still is on the bottom and it's, that's one of those things. If, if you're used to Vapor Shark products, the screen's just going to be on the bottom, and it's just it's on the bottom. That's where it is. It's not ideal. It's not ideal for me, but it is what it is. They kept the form factor really, really small, and they kept the screen on the bottom. So there's also a little bit of misinformation out there being perpetuated around YouTube and around Facebook that I've seen about two amp charging. So what's the benefit of two amp charging? So Vapor Shark is the only device, the only DNA 200 with two amp charging. No other DNA 200s have two amp charging, only the VaporShark DNA 200. And I don't want to repeat myself, but only the VaporShark DNA 200 has two amp charging. No other DNA 200 devices have two amp charging. This is a thing that they worked with Evolve with to get their boards specifically made for them to have two amp charging capabilities. So what's the benefit of that? Well, it charges twice as fast. You can charge this from dead to full, they said in like 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that, where it, was, it, would, normal, it would normally take 90 minutes to charge this same 10 watt hour battery from dead to fully charged. It charges it just really, really fast. If you have a two amp charger, then yeah, you can charge it at two amps really, really fast. Um, I'm not sure. I kind of wish it was heavier. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's really nice. It's really light, but it makes it feel a little more, I don't know, less durable, I guess. You know, there's that certain mentality where it's like heavy things are durable. It's like you get a big heavy tape measure and you're like, bah, this tape measure will last me forever. But if you get a little flimsy tape measure, you're like, this tape measure is not going to last me. It's flimsy. It feels light. Same thing, man. It doesn't feel very substantial. It's got the same batteries. It's got the same button. It's got the same boards. It's just in a different enclosure and it's got a completely different finish on it. This Vapor Shark on here is just imprinted into the finish. It's just carved in there or laser etched in there whereas this one was actually like printed on there you can clearly see vapor shark whereas this with this one can't really see vapor shark but i assure you i assure you it's on there you see it do you see the vapor shark on there 
Yeah, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like on the production versions. So yeah, some pretty huge differences uh, that I didn't really know about. Um, I just, I just didn't know. I didn't reach out to Vapor Shark. I was operating under the assumption that I had a final unit, um, which I clearly did not. So uh, my apologies to Vapor Shark. I didn't really represent the device as well as I could have, and that 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 bums me out, man. That's what I'm here to do is like portray accurate information. And I didn't have all the information because I just assumed that I had all it when eh, really I didn't. So yeah, it's uh, it would, it probably would have been a completely different review. Vapor shark has really kind of gone out of their way to make this a very unique device to make sure that it's not like every other DNA 200 out on the market two amp zip charging, their own custom buttons, their own pre-programmed, you know, profiles in here. The watt hours are already calculated for your batteries. It's as accurate as it's possibly going to be. And in some cases with temperature, wattage and voltage, it's going to be more accurate than other DNA 200 devices. So yeah, so yeah, that's what I got. That's what I got for review rewind. Uh, this isn't going to be necessarily a segment that's going to happen every single week, but I feel like some of these ending segments are a little bit slightly interchangeable. I want to do more retro vaping. There's going to be reviews for things that never got reviews. And when neither of those happen, there's going to be a uh, review rewind, which, you know, it is what it is. It's a review rewind. All right, so uh, yeah, we're coming down to the end of the vlog here. And of course, of course, I can't end the vlog without doing everybody's favorite segment. So yeah, my my favorite comments of the week. And I actually have, I actually have two for you this week because the first one is just so short, but it just, oh, it just made me chuckle. Someone commented this on, I believe it was a vlog, and I'm not really sure which vlog it was. Uh, Denise Vequera, she commented and said, the beard fondling makes me moist. <laughs> that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. And I know, you know what? You know why that made me laugh is because I have friends. I have people who are offended by the word moist. I love the word moist. I think it's a sexy word. But a lot of people, they're really upset by moist. You know, there's words that you hate saying or that when you hear them, you just go, oh, God, why did he use that word? I have, I, you know what my number one least favorite word to say or hear said is? Are you ready? Can anybody guess? Discs. Oh, I hate that word. I hate saying discs. I hate hearing people say the word discs. It just uh, it just bothers me. Anyway, Denise, that was uh, that was hilarious. And this one actually, the last one actually came from Instagram. Um, Chase Chase Harkness says, uh, "Grim, nothing is better than uh, Evod One. Let's get real. I only want to say." Evod videos, man. Pulls. <laughs> what? I have a feeling I was just getting trolled, but I went to his page and uh, I didn't see much vaping stuff. And that leads me to believe that maybe he really, really loves the Evod one and he wants to see more Evod videos. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to, uh, I might edit out his, uh, his name because that's his full name. But uh, I might edit that out. Grim, nothing is better than the EVOD 1. Let's get real. <laughs> I only want to see EVOD videos, man. <laughs> Please. Uh, it's good times. It's good times there in the comments. So I'm going to have more. Uh, got a lot of stuff coming up. A lot of mech mods, RDAs, RBAs, RTAs all coming up because that's what vaping is. A lot of regulated devices as well thrown in there. My schedule for the next couple weeks is just going to be crazy, man. Um, I am going to have a double feature uh, this coming Monday. I will not have a vlog next week. I will not have review videos the following week, and I will not have a vlog the following week either. <laughs> it's all going to come back with the travel vlog. And what I've decided is to do one sort of travel vlog that is both events. Sure, I'm going to do a little bit from both, a little bit from column A, a little bit from column B. I'm going to try to make it fun and interesting, not have anything, you know, bah, boring or anything in there. I'm pumped to go to New Orleans, and I am 
pumped to go to Ireland. So if you're at either of those two events, I will see you there absolutely. But that's what I got for today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, what am I going to grab? Of course, it's going to be the Vapor Shark Zephyrus version 2. Let's keep on vaping.